Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden NFL and welcome to episode 12 of the Tropical Food Gardening TV series. And in this episode, we're actually gonna do a review over the farm in Punta Gorda to show you how things are going. So currently it is September 15th of 2020. We have planted a lot of things. The, the thing that I'm actually really looking forward to is the passion fruit vines that I planted so far because I know that that will produce a lot of fruit following years. And I'm also looking forward to all the sugar apples that I planted, but I still have so much more to plant. So let me just show you guys how it's coming along. And uh, so this is a sugar apple rose, as I think you guys would most be interested in. And actually in the beginning I have June plums and these June plums are just huge now at this point. I really love June plums and eating them green. Coming along here, as you see, the sugar apples are doing very well. And I actually planted a seashore I mean, a lemon drop mango scene right here. So this lemon drop mango scene is doing very well. It has new growth. And if you didn't know, a lemon drop mango scene is one of the mango scenes you can actually grow in Florida successfully. So as you see, here are all the sugar apples and they're actually coming out with brand new flowers, also with end leaves, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna let them flower just yet because, of, because I want more vegetative growth rather than, you know, flowers. And I believe I had a sugar apple on here, but since I wasn't here in the past few days, possibly a squirrel ate it. But as you see, here's this one. And we've been getting a brutal amount of sun and a brutal amount of rain. So some of them got burnt, as you see in the bottom. So overall, in between the sugar apples, I'm planting chop and drop materials such as, that is castor bean and Mexican sunflower. As you see, they're all along here too. That's Mexican sunflower. And I have some things such as some beans, uh, Tai Long beans, and uh, in between I also have some pineapples. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I explained that these waterways are actually pretty cool and I'm gonna use them to my advantage because these sugar apples love to be planted next to a source of water. So as you see, these sugar apples are just doing very well. This one is a seedling I got from Colombia and it actually is thriving here. I'm glad to see, you know, something I ate from another country thrive in uh, this country. So look at this guys, beautiful, beautiful sugar apples. and. Like I said, I don't really mind these being on here. I could cut these off because I kind of really want more vegetative growth, but we'll leave them on for now. Right here's a red hawk plum. As you see, it's doing great. And right next to it is the yellow hawk plum which people say is bigger and sweeter. And this one is actually growing much faster. Here are some of the sugar apple flowers. This is my Panama Red passion fruit. And as you see, when I planted it, it had more kind of stems, but I trimmed them and I made it so it's just a single file one and it has been growing. I planted it about two weeks ago. As you see, this is the new growth. It's very fragile, so I'm gonna kind of leave it alone. And it's gonna be able to grow all the way up bad. And this is just right behind where I have all the sugar apples. And so I want this tree just to be hanging with uh, big red passion fruit. Now I also have four other variety, varieties of passion fruit on the property for now. And I'm also propagating all of these uh, vines that I have because there's just so many trees that can be converted to fruit trees with passion fruit vine. So this is a possum purple. This one's doing, this one's doing good as you see sending out its new growth because when I cut it, it currently wasn't having a little dominant kind of leading thing. So it just made a new one. As you guys see, it's been raining really bad, so these waterways are actually already cut out by the previous owner to kind of capture the water. And as you see, it elevated certain areas, which is perfect for a sugar apple. Something I want to show you guys really quick is this is my miracle fruit or miracle berry. As you see, I planted it in the ground, and these are said to love acidic soil. And I didn't test the soil, so I just kind of just planted it. As you see. The berries are really red and ready to be picked. 
right beside it is this is the passiflora quadrangularis i believe and this is the passion fruit that gets huge now they actually say you can actually eat the skin of this passion fruit like the actual hard part and pulp as well and it's like the size of a football guys and even bigger so i have one vine right here and it's climbing up this large oak tree and then to the right of it I actually have another vine climbing up another tree that will eventually cross because I heard that the nursery told me that these actually need two plants to actually pollinate much better so I said you know what why not I'm gonna actually get another one and this one's actually growing pretty fast compared to the other one and it's just gonna cover all this area right here and it's gonna I'm gonna let it go crazy once it hits those uh, top of the trees now let me show you guys over here in this area as you see I have some things like these are baby jackfruits, pineapples, that's a rubber tree. And then to kind of like the sides of here, I have guavas. And guys, guavas have actually taken the kind of flooding, the induation very well. You know, they really had no wilt, unlike some of my other plants. So I'm kind of leaving them there. As you see, this is a Thai white guava. It's doing, it's beautiful, setting on new growth. But right here on this tree, Right over here on this big tree right here, I have um, four different varieties, or three for now, but I'm gonna have a total of four varieties of passion fruit. This is, uh, I'm not sure which one this one is. This one's a local one from Brightonton that grows wild, but it's actually very sweet. I was gifted from a friend. This passion fruit variety is, I believe it's sort of a cross or hybrid of uh, some passion fruit varieties, but I got it from my Thai friend who says it's apparently very sweet. And then right over here, I have another hybrid. And this one is actually uh, Panama Red crossed with, uh, I believe, Sunshine Yellow or Sunrise Yellow. And apparently they're both two big red passion fruits. So we're gonna see, you know, how it turns out in the future. This is kind of how it looks. As you see, those are where I had all the passion fruits and then the sugar apple rose are just over there. So as you see, it's a very still high density. I, I love high density gardening and, and or and farming in this case. But as you see, we're gonna have so much fruit in a high tight space. So under the oaks here, I kind of have my little nursery. Now I also have, I have my nursery right now split between my main house and then here in Punta Huerta, the fruit farm. So as you see, let me just give you a little tour kind of right here. Here is I have some tramoyas. Now I moved them from my house to here because they were receiving too much sun and getting burned. But here I believe they're, they're thriving pretty well. So those we're gonna see if we can fruit one here or just probably use them as root stock. As you see, I have a bunch of ignibera ice cream beans, which I had moved here under the oak trees from my house because they were getting too much sun. In um, Florida, we've just been getting some brutal sun. Here are some, I believe, scotch bonnet uh, peppers. I'm not too sure, but they're just beautiful. I love the way how uh, some peppers just hang there. And I'm growing those in shade, guys, because peppers kind of need some shade. They can't get too much sun or they'll dry up pretty fast, especially when they're in a pot. Uh, this is duck flower. Uh, I can't wait till these flower because the flower is apparently very beautiful, big, and vibrant. And I just right here is where I have a, all my passion fruit cuttings. Now, some of them are actually taking. I can see them ruining out very well. And uh, I have like four different varieties. Now, some of them didn't take. I can see they're wilting. But like I said, some of them are taking. These are just, uh, this is a peanut butter tree. Right over here is where I have sugar apple, my little sugar apple nursery. These are all, I still all have to plant. And all these are from seed. So as you see, beautiful. A lot of sugar apples. And this pot right here, all these pots are actually relinias from the relinia. I'd eaten maybe a month ago now. And as you see guys, they're popping up. I kind of, I like doing community pot, but maybe on these ones, it might've been better to kind of single, kind of pot them out because as you see here, I have the Relinia XL. I just call it because the fruit was huge. I mean, it popped out all beautifully, all nice. So we're gonna take really good care of these. Um, some of them didn't make it. I see like they popped out, but they kind of dried out. All over here is where I have purple sugar apples, and then I have PPC germinating and rooting over there, but it hasn't, only one has popped up. So we're not sure uh, kind of how successful those will be. But as you see, uh, just my little nursery going. 
this I'm really looking forward to for medicinal purposes this is aloe. I separated a lot from the mother plant on my house. I have some things on here that I have to get separated and planted. Sugar apples, ice cream beans. This is passion fruit, just from some seeds I threw. <laughs> I really have to get that sorted and plant it all around here. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much a little update. It's not everything of the farm, but you know, some stuff I wanted to share with you guys. It's September 15th of 2020, and it'll be cool to see the next update and how much we improved. All right, guys, have a great day.